The staff come from all different walks of life, our patients come from all different walks of life and we try to make this place a safe place for everybody to come and visit, to feel like they can come and birth culturally safe but also within a safe space. When working with patients from Aboriginal background, you have to know the history of this country and what's led to poor health for Aboriginal people. Um, why there's the healthcare gap there is. Um, why this has happened. They have been supportive of, of me and I'm able to express myself and talk to people about issues or anything that's going on. It's been a good experience for me. So women call our service and uh, we ask them if they identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. And if they do identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, we inform them about Budjabulakwila, the unit here. They've got a safe place that they can come mm. to that's, that's a bit quiet. It's not a huge space, but it's big enough to sit and mm. be and have a cuppa, have a yarn mm. and just be. We do a lot of training with our staff in regards to being able to work with women cult with culturally sensitive information um, and how to work well with women from different backgrounds. There's a few of us, me included, that have done a um, cultural awareness uh, course uh, with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in, in mind um, that I completed earlier in this year and it's um, yeah, really opened up my eyes to sort of the, um, the needs of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. So culturally there are some differences that we should be respectful of always and it allows us then, if we're not sure to ask and to understand, the, tr the cultural awareness training is a priority to attend. But I think listening and building relationships ensures positive outcomes and it's not simple but it's really what we should be focusing on.